five four abs drop this one megan maybe the most dejected that we have seen the, not maybe without a doubt the most dejected we've seen this abs locker room uh for me in the last two years i'm gonna go ahead and speak for you here <laughs> this season for you um i guess actually was that the most dejected you've seen this team no, it was. We were remarking on our way after Bednar's availability because I know for me personally, it felt a lot different. It yeah. was a heavy atmosphere in the room afterwards, and they looked really dejected. I haven't seen them like that, and I've been in the room after losses before, but mm -hmm. this one definitely felt different. Yeah. Kale McCarr was just kind of sitting in his locker stall with all of his gear still on for quite a while uh, until after we came in. Um, a lot of blank stares everyone that we talked to was pretty somber you know pretty pretty um monotone look this wasn't a good start for the abs overall i would say this probably wasn't a good game for the abs the third period feels like it undoes a little bit of that um but like megan how many times just in that first 40 minutes did you and i look at each other like what is happening like <laughs> bad plays the first period, it felt zany, and we were willing to yes. chalk it up to being poor puck management. They can get this back. Zany's a great word for that first. Things got worse yeah. in the second, and their problems became greater. And so the funny antics of the first, I think, were papered over because of a late period goal from Cagliano. He yeah. felt a little bit better going in the second, but it wasn't because it was a good period. There right. were just weird things happening. No, like weird moments both teams mishandled the puck at points yep. but florida was able to capitalize when right. the abs mishandled theirs well, like i mean you literally just had guys like falling down like all over the ice in that first period like you said pucks were bouncing everywhere guys are running into each other for like for both teams right and, and florida gets those three goals early and and i'm with you like you get one late andrew Collier gets one, gets one late it's three to one you never feel good trailing by two, but like you said, just such a weird period. They're like, ah, whatever. It felt like you were going to see a pushback from the abs for that reason. Like, hey, we got down on some crap luck. We just got worse and worse and worse. And, and they played more poorly and more poorly and more poorly. Um, just, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to find words here. But like, we talked to multiple guys in the room, Jared Bednar. Just not good enough, and I think that more than sums up what we saw in that first 40 minutes. Your thoughts on Georgiev tonight? Not great. You'd love to see him come up with a stop early, but... <laughs> yeah, it's really hard. I wouldn't say that he had a great performance, but I also felt like there were some moments where he did make the saves that he needed to. It's actually so unfortunate, the late power play goal against he had such a good save that could have <laughs> saved the game only right. to be followed up with seconds a goal before against. yeah so a goal against that goes off of kale off of rodriguez and into the net really there were yes there were some really difficult to defend against as a goaltender things that happen mistakes that get made i would say it's a a shared blame between both parties at yeah. this point yeah jared bednar said after the game look this is on all of us right now coaches players everybody um the, the, the just we use the term a lot play a full 60 you know you understand that you're never going to get 60 minutes of perfect play you understand that but you can't have 20 minutes of of good to really good play and that was what the abs had in the third they mounted three goal comeback really <laughs> they had to do it twice because the original time goal from Lekkinen gets waved off for obvious offside, I don't know why. I mean, they end up getting it back, but Devontae doesn't drag a foot or anything there. Clearly offsides. JT Confer scores again just a couple minutes later. Does tie it up. Megan, I want to get your opinion on the penalty sequence that we saw there at the end. A missed high stick on JT Confer in the neutral zone um, leads to the play coming back the other way. Miko Rantanen gets called for interference. Here's where I'm a little torn on this. That was interference. You can't you can't just blow a guy up on a board battle if he doesn't have the puck. But at the same time, as Jared Bednar alluded to and Miko Rantanen alluded to a little bit, wow, did he go down easy. At, to me, at, at, at worst there, you have to see them take both. Did you have any issues with the way that was called? Did, am I... 
Am I going like too far by saying I thought it was an interference call? Was that just embellishment? Straight no, up? No, I do think it was interference. You know, the embellishment angle is tough because even if they, they both go to the box, I don't think the Avs win this game. You know, Ooh, I wow. don't think it changes the... Because that moment of frustration is where, like, I think Taves being too eager and having this goal taken back because it's offside. So these are symptoms of a larger problem. These little wow, mistakes yeah. get made feel like, and that's not to emphasize on Taves specifically, no, 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 Branton no, no. specifically in this instance, but when Jared Bednar talked about frustration and how that manifests in games, I would point to that as a moment it was poorly timed. Yeah. And it's not to say that he didn't have a fair grievance there. I, I absolutely think he sure. did. I think both guys should go to the box, one for embellishment. I mean, we've seen it happen for less. We've seen yeah. guys, you're like, I'm actually sure that was embellishment. And they get yeah. the call. It's tough, but you know, officiating has been a little weird, honestly, the last few games mm -hmm. in general. And the Avs are aware of that being a possibility in any game, but I would hope for more preparedness in that regard. Um, and that's where I, I have a little bit of criticism. Well, and, and then building on that a little bit, you never want to be like this guy either. But Jared Bednar talked last week about not leaving the game up to the last minute, not leaving exactly. it up to a coin flip. And, and it's just a shame that it was a great third period. You know, you mount the comeback and all that stuff, but they slept walked through the first 40 minutes. And, and so it just, when you have that happen, it's hard to get upset about a call late in a game where it's like, you know, had, had it been this great back and forth game, because like, I have seen that at times, where you have this really good game, you know, the, the play is going back and forth, it's great goals, great action at both ends, and yeah, you have a call like that late, and it's easy to be like, come on, why are the refs trying to decide a game? This is one where I have a hard time getting there because it's like, it, it was a miracle that you were even back in the game to begin with. It was a it was a it was a heroic effort to even get it back to four to four, and it's just a shame that it took them forty minutes to get into it. I love what you just said there about there being a larger problem. We saw that frustration boil over in Vancouver a bit. Uncharacteristic for this team. I still do. I think this team comes out of it. I just think they are. I, I think that the leadership in the room is too strong. I think the players are too high end for them not to. This is definitely uh, some adversity we haven't seen this organization have to overcome in a number of years. Interestingly, a couple things. One, in talking with Cagliano this morning about the Vancouver game, he kind of shrugged it off. Like, dealing with those types of games and responding to them is their job. They yeah. win a Stanley Cup by not being able to respond to those types of games. And it doesn't age well when they have a game like this tonight, so right. shortly after that conversation. but. I do feel like they are professionals in how they are meant to respond to games like this. It's not the first disappointing loss that they've experienced that they have to. There just isn't another choice. And then Makar in his media availability. He was unafraid to criticize the team's performance. He did allude to the same thing, like you, you don't win games if you don't play for an entire 40 mm -hmm. minutes. But he also went on to say that he still has belief in this group. And I think you can look to the third period and the heroics that were shown as if they were to play like that for the entire game, they can win games. Right. So there's still belief in the group. It's just the issue in how they've applied it over the span of 60 minutes. and needing to do some things mentally to figure out how to apply that over the span of the entire game versus just one period. They, they need some type of mental reset. And that, I'm not saying that like in the terms of like days off or they, they need something to turn the page. And you maybe thought that this game tonight could have been that where it's like, hey, snap out of it. You got away with it. You came back and won. They need something where it's like this mental page turn. That's what they were so good at last year. Um, it's just been interesting to watch with the injury, you know, the first part of the season, the injuries really piled up. I think that, you know, kind of dropped, you know, a, a, a weight on them. And then you've got some guys who are just a little snake bit and the team as a whole, they're, they're the lowest shooting percentage in the NHL. I just think it's been one thing after another that is stacked onto this team. And I love your, your point a minute ago of, I think you're just seeing it all boil over in these small little tendencies. And that's what I think was disappointing about tonight was the Edmonton game felt like the game where you worked on all the details. All the details were right. You had to come back. You did come back. You get the win. And it felt like that was something really for them to build on. And maybe it still is. Maybe this is a wake up call in a different way where it's like, hey, what? You thought that you could do it once and then just show up and it was going to happen again? I think there's the leadership in that room to get it done. But their next game will be halfway through this season. 
they've got games in hand with with by play, by point percentage they are still on the inside of the playoffs but you need to it needs to stop being by point percentage you need to get back in like we talked about at the beginning of the year last year get in and put that in your rearview mirror don't even worry about it anymore don't fall back out of a playoff spot they're good they they had the guys get it turned around they just have to do it you look at how they finally found ways to score goals tonight obviously not at the right time and not enough but it's more than they have put up in a while too you hope that the floodgates have opened offensively for them a little bit and the disappointment and frustration of coming so close and falling short hopefully is something they build upon into the next game jared ben and i talked about it this morning channeling frustration and anger and all of that in the right way this was easily the most upset I've seen them in the locker room in two years. Oh, yeah. You're going into Chicago, the 10-win Blackhawks. This Avs team needs to channel all of that frustration and anger into that game on, was it Thursday? The game on Thursday. Go get an easy win. And I don't mean easy in terms of you blow them out 8-1. to one. Get a lead, get out ahead, and put the game away. Don't have a chaotic third period, a crazy scramble, because that's the other thing, Megan, that we talked about. The first period was just chaotic. Like, it was just chaos. The Avs need a game that's calm. They take control. They get a lead, and they put a team away. That's what they need to do in Chicago. Shake this bad feeling. Channel that frustration the right way. They just need to control what they can control. Yep. Weird things in the first period, they can't control. But there are so many other things left on the table that they can. Yep, absolutely. Avs dropped this one 5-4 to four despite the three-goal comeback in the third period. Uh, power play goal against in the dying minutes uh, sends the Avs home. Zero points on the night. Next game in Chicago, 6.30 Mountain Time on Thursday.